So we all know how it feels to be lonely. You feel like no one cares about you. You feel like no one has your back. You know, it feels like everyone is moving forward in life while you're stuck in the same place. You know, it's a really tough spot to be in. And I can relate to that because just right after high school and even sometimes in high school, I felt the exact same way. Like, yeah, I had friends when I was in high school, but when the day would end, I would literally dread going home because I knew that all I was going to do is get in my bed and get deep into my own thoughts. And those times were really tough for me. You know, I got a lot of negative thoughts, like, like really negative. Like I contemplated about ending it almost every single day. And the only way I was able to cope was with video games and making online friends with people who are all the way across the world. And you know, if you're a gamer, then you understand how comforting it is to have like friends online because it just seems like they can never do any wrong. But there was always something missing to that dynamic and I knew it. It was missing that connection of being together in real life. Because when you think about it, all you two are really doing is just staring at a screen together, controlling animated characters with no expression on your face. But what you desire is the feeling of importance. And deep down, this is something that every human craves. And you know, we lie to ourselves now because it seems narcissistic to the modern world to desire people to want to like you and want to talk to you. And you know, when you spend time alone with yourself, it gives you time to reflect on who you are, but you do it in a negative way because you determine the value of your person by the standards of others. And you know, some people acknowledge this fact and just accept it. Some people change it. Some people are in denial of this fact. And then there are some that are just absolutely oblivious to it. Like there's this one girl whose house I was over like sometime last year or so. And as I was getting ready to leave, she just started bawling her eyes out and crying out of nowhere. So I asked her why. And her answer was she didn't like being alone because she didn't like herself. Like, you know, she was always this big party girl. She was always like out going out at a party or she was always with someone. She was never, ever alone. And she admitted to me that the reason for that was because she never could stand who she was. She was always with someone because she didn't like to be reminded of who she was when she was alone. You don't like yourself. And that's where being alone becomes a negative experience. But there's a reason why you don't like yourself. So I wanna do a quick talk of where the origin of low self-esteem comes from. So when you were a child, you never found any flaws in yourself. You know, you never looked at another child and felt insecure because I don't know, he had better hair than you or whatever. But as you grew older, you started to crave this feeling of importance. And this is where comparisons came into your life, causing a depression in your self-esteem. Like for example, seventh grade was when this problem started for me. This was when girls were starting to develop crushes and desiring certain guys. And if you were anything like me, then your way of getting girls was talking to them about the guy that they liked. Ugh. Hate thinking about that, man. Fuck. And they would tell me things that, made them attracted to the guy and some of them were genetics based which really lowered my confidence and i would even give them tips on what to do to get the guy to like them back i look back at it now and it blows my mind that my mind used to work like that but situations like this where they would tell me about what they liked about their crush were just things that i didn't have and this caused me to look in the mirror for hours and hours just looking at myself and picking out what i didn't like and what i didn't have you know like why don't i have clear skin like him maybe that's why girls don't want me i wish i didn't have a gap in between my teeth maybe more people would talk to me why does he get to be six one and i'm five four that's not fair you know just all these excuses were just really re i was just what was me it was all just what was me just feeling bad about myself. And for me, this is where my low self-esteem came from. And some of you have had similar situations like this as well. So this is where your self-esteem came from. But there are tons of ways to develop low self-esteem. And another major one was parents, which was one problem for me as well. Like for instance, your parent or parents would always make the biggest deals of your fault growing up but were never impressed by your accomplishments. Like they only pointed out to you the things that you've done wrong, but would never mention any of the times that you've done good. My mom would even compare me to my brother who was the same age as me, but we were just two different people because all the time he got good grades in high school and got great grades in middle school. Even when we both turned 18, he was going to an out of state university while I was going to a community college in state. You know, she was always quick to point out what he was doing good and never the bad, but using his goods to make me feel worse about myself. But those were the two most common ones that I've heard of, which was girls and parents. Because as hetero men, we naturally desired girls and appraisal from our parents. But when we never got it, 
it stuck with us and shaped who we grew up to be. And you know, your low self-esteem could come from other factors as well, like from teachers, relatives, friends, or social experiences. So that was what began our journey of terribly low self-esteem. And it only got worse as we grew up because even though social media was always around, it really got competitive towards the late side of high school. Because you know, this is where you started to see men with all these girls wearing expensive watches, nice cars, and big houses. And this is even worse because you start to get demotivated because these are external things that you genuinely believe that you could never have. You know, when you were younger, it was things that were fixable. And you know, you kind of knew it would get better with time, like height, acne, teeth, etc. But with materialistic things, these are just things that you genuinely believe that no matter how much time passed, you could have never attained something like that. And this leads to unbelievable amounts of self-loathing and lack of confidence. But there is true beauty in isolation. And you begin to realize that after you start to like yourself. Because then there's no reason to hate being alone if you like who you are. In fact, you start to appreciate being alone when you like who you are. And something else that stacks on that is when you have something to work on. Because when you're alone with nothing to do, you will naturally start to do things that aren't good for you. Like for example, if you wanna start a business or you're studying, this is keeping your mind occupied and you're doing something that will provide security for your future self. And you know that you are working on something that will benefit you in the long term, also known as delayed gratification. But let's say the opposite, you get home, you hop in bed and you just go on social media. Then you immediately start to compare yourself to the successful people that you see and just begin to feel bad for yourself and wish that you could have their life. And this is detrimental to your mental health. Or another example, one that used to happen to me, you just play the video game for a few hours and that keeps you busy and feeling good because you leveled up your character or something. But after you hop off, you sort of like go into this like deep thought and realize that your character in real life has not leveled up for 20 years. And that eats you up because it certainly messed me up. You know, especially when you decide to stack that on top of beating off some girl made of pixels online, feeling even worse about yourself because you know you can't get her in real life. It's things like this that make your mental health progressively worse and make you hate being alone. If you want to enjoy being alone with yourself, you have to learn to like yourself. So how can you learn to like yourself? By making yourself more competent. For the people who don't know what competence is, it's your ability to be given a task and think to yourself, I can do that. And the more often you can say that to yourself upon a variety of tasks, the more competent you become. For example, a guy who thinks he can't do anything because he simply has never tried is likely to have very low self-esteem. Compared to a guy who honestly believes that he can do anything he puts his mind to because he's accomplished a lot of different things is gonna have extremely high self-esteem. Like a guy who's never tried to talk to a stranger is gonna be very bad for the first time talking to a stranger. But a guy who's initiated a conversation to over a thousand strangers is gonna go up to the thousand and first stranger and start up a conversation like it was nothing. And this applies to everything in your life. If you're not used to being alone, try being alone with no stimulation and just stare at a wall or something for like an hour. You know, it's gonna be boring. It's gonna be tedious. You're not going to feel stimulated. It's going to be a bad experience, but the more often you're alone and you reflect on yourself, not in a negative way, but in a productive way, like how can you fix a problem about yourself that you don't like? Over time, it will become easier and easier and eventually enjoyable. Like when I was first starting off on this, I would reflect and find something that I didn't like about myself. Like personally for me, it was being awkward and not mindful when talking to strangers. So what did I do? At the beginning, I made a plan to interact with at least one stranger any public area I would go. And what do you know? After doing this consistently for seven months, I'm doing this effortlessly at the gym, grocery mart, gas station, it doesn't matter, wherever I want. And did I have some bad experiences? Of course, but overall, it was 100% worth it. Don't let being alone be seen as a bad thing because it's not. It is an opportunity for growth and understanding. Take care, bro.